Okay, what we add to today's lesson is the equal sign, so they're equations. Same stuff that we've been doing, so you're still going to get to see and all of the same stuff, but it's got equal signs, so it's an equation. So we actually get to figure out what X is. This first kind of problem that I'm starting off with is my favorite kind, because when you just have a fraction equal to a fraction, all you got to do is cross multiply. Okay, you've been doing that for a while on that one. It's just a fraction equal a fraction with no extra junk on it. You can just cross multiply against that equal sign. You can't cross multiply against an addition or subtraction. People always want to try that. You can't do it. Only works against an equal sign. Okay, so this is going to be, I'm going to write it out this time, but I'll probably skip this step in the future. It'll be 3 times 4x plus 5 equals 9 times x plus 1. Okay. Normally, I'll just do what I'm fixing to do now. Go ahead and distribute it and skip that step. But that gets you 12x plus 15 equals 9x plus 9. Now, that's a pretty easy equation to solve. You've got four pieces to it. You can pick which piece you want to start with. No? Subtract 9x, Kylie said. So that gets me 3x plus 15 is equal to 9. Now to get the x all by itself, you've got to get rid of that 15. So you're subtracting 15. So 3x is negative 6 in your last step. Divide by 3. And x is negative 2. Now before I circle that, when it's fractions involved, you have to check it. Because remember, if you end up with a zero on the bottom of the fraction, that can't happen. That's undefined. It's uh, impossible. So we got to just check and make sure that a negative 2 won't make either one of these denominators a zero. Here, negative 2 plus 1, that's not zero, is it? No. Okay, 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 plus 5 is not zero, is it? No. So you're good to go. What if it does make Remember, that's called an extraneous solution. And you would just say, if there, if there was only one of them, you would say there's no solution. Are they all like this? Gonna, no, they're not all the cross multiply them. There's going to be different types of them. Just got to start something. All right, let me let you try one of those because y'all seem to grasp that a little bit. Uh, yeah, it is easier to solve this. I can't it. All right, negative 4 over x plus 3 equals 5 over x minus 3. Solve for x. It's like the one we just did. I want you to see if you can get it. Go. Negative 4 over x plus 3 equals 5 over x minus Just got a fraction equal to a fraction again on this one. So you're just going to start off by cross multiplying. Be careful with your signs. You got a negative 4 times that, so negative 4 times x, and negative 4 times negative 3. Then on the other side, I got a 5 times x and a 5 times 3. Okay, so that's so far so good? Mm -hmm. What would you do first here? Okay, I'll go with Kylie and add 4x. 12 would be 9x plus 15. Now Kylie doesn't have a choice. She's got to subtract the 15. 
Here's where some of you started getting nervous because you don't think that yeah. you can have a fraction as an answer, but a fraction's a number. It can be an answer. My nine's being multiplied by x, so I just divide by that. Yeah, negative three ninths is the same as negative one third. It should be fairly obvious to you that that doesn't make the denominators a zero. It would have to be a three or a negative three to make the denominator a zero, right? Is everybody okay? Yeah. Ah. Some's got some addition and subtraction in it where we can't cross multiply. I got 5 over x plus 7 over 4 equals, is that positive or negative? Negative 9 over x. Alright, so it's an addition problem, it's got fractions on it. What we're looking to be able to do here is to knock the fractions out. You want to be able to get rid of the fractions so that you can get it to that level of middle school equation that you're good at. Okay, so to get rid of the fraction, what you're going to have to do, like for example, if I had one fourth, what would I do to get rid of the over four? What would I multiply it by? Four. So the fours would cancel out. So what you're looking at, here's the same thing. You're going to multiply this whole thing by what its denominator would be. Okay, so its denominator, it's got to have an x, it's got to have a 4, already got an x there, so we're going to multiply the whole thing by 4x, by the, what the common denominator would be, which is what we've done the last few days. Okay, now this is pretty simple here. I've got to distribute this common denominator to all three pieces. And remember the plan is that we should see the denominators cancel out, so look for that as we go. If I take the 4x all the way over here, to the 5 over x, probably need to write it down the first step. If I had 5 over x times 4x, those x's would cancel out, right? Mm -hmm. So you've just got 5 times 4. Alright, let's take the 4x to the 7 fourths. So I had 7 fourths times 4x. The 4's would cancel out. So I'll just have 7 times x. All right? Now if I take the 4x here to the last piece, I got negative 9 over x times 4x. What's going to cancel out? The x's. x's. So I just got negative 9 times 4. Uh -huh. I normally don't. Over here where I showed the work on those fractions, I normally skip that, but since it was the first time doing that problem today, I wanted to show you how it actually works out. Uh, we got a two-step middle school equation. That's what we were going for. So what do I do first to start solving this? Now, kid. So 7x is equal to negative 56. Yep, divide by 7, and that gets us negative 8. Is that okay? Can negative 8 work? Yeah. Yep. That's it. Mm -hmm. Alright, want to do another one like similar to that before I let you try one. Okay, got what you need on that page? Mm -hmm. Okay, no problemo. out. We need to get rid of the fraction. So look at it and think and tell me what will I multiply it by? What's its common denominator that will cancel it out? 
right? Y'all are both saying it right. Kylie's already distributed it. Macy's keeping it separate. It's going to be the product of what you got. So one, that's a one over one, right? One times X minus five times X. Now I'm going to keep it in its parts. I'm not going to distribute it. So I'm just going to keep it in its parts. That way, when I go to multiply it here, I can see which part cancels out. If I've already distributed it, sometimes it's hard for me to visualize what cancels out. Okay? So when I go to the one, there's nothing on bottom other than a one, so nothing's going to cancel out. So I have to do one times x times x minus five. Now I've got a minus sign, so I'm bombing on the eight now. Here, the x minus fives will cancel out, so it's just eight times x. Everybody okay? Mm -hmm. Equals short bomb to the three. Here, what cancels? Just the x. So it'll be three times x minus five. That's the hard part. Now this is basic algebra stuff that you got here. One times x is just x. So that gets you x squared minus 5x minus 8x is equal to 3x minus 15. About some like terms over here. I mean, I'm not showing you. Do you have like terms over here? All right, so what's negative 5x minus 8x? Good, thank you, David. All right, we got a squared on this thing. We got a quadratic. When we have a quadratic, what do we have to do to, before we start solving it? So it equals zero. Good, Caitlin. So I'm going to subtract this 3x from itself and its buddy. I'm going to add this 15 since it's being subtracted, but it doesn't have a buddy, so it's just going to get stuck on the end. So I got x squared. Negative 13 and negative 3 is negative 16x plus 15 is equal to 0. All right, back to quadratic days. Your, your choices, say what? Okay. Your choices here, you can do the quadratic formula. That's factorable. If I can ever factor it, I'm going to. It's easier and quicker for me. But if you choose, you can do the quadratic formula on that one. Reason I know it'll factor on my a times c, the factors of 15 that add to negative 16, or negative 15 and negative 1, right? So x minus 15 times x minus 1 equals 0. What do I got to do to finish getting my answers here? Solve. Right, so it'll each equal to 0 and solve. So we got 15. see that. I don't remember what the original problem said to be thinking about checking that. Does it, will it work? Yeah, because you got a minus 5. 15 minus 5 is not 0 and 1 minus 5 is not 0. So you can circle those dudes. Oh, go ahead, whoever has to. Um, okay, I, like under the x-axis, what's the x-axis? Negative 15. Negative 15. Negative 15. Negative 15. I, I did um, a times oh, yeah, C. Did the yeah. Okay, got it. See, it makes sense like when we do the notes. So, you know, I'm like the other part. Because you can't think on your own. That's part of your dilemma. And if I have to drive myself nuts in these last however many months of school we have, I'm going to make you think on your own. You're going to kick and scream, but you're going to think on your own. I didn't say you were. Did I? So sit around. Am I not right? If I was sitting there right beside you, would you not have been able to do it? Okay, so she could. Hmm. You're going to learn to think on your own. I'm not doing you a fair job if you don't, because when you go to college, you can't think on your own, you're not going to do well. That's why I gotta be a butt and ignore you every now and then. Alright, I want you to try one of those now. How about 15 over x plus 4 over 5 
is equal to 7 over x. Alright, see if you can do that one. Go. denominator of 2 and another one had a denominator of 2. It's it would just be two two, right, right. I mean, 4 would be 1, but you want the smallest one. Mm -hmm. Least common denominator. this thing back. Five. 5x. Very good. So when I go to the 15 here, x's will cancel. So I've got 15 times 5. Just 75. Good. Plus, when I go to the 4 fifths here, the 5's cancel. 4x is right. Good. When I go to the last, the x's cancel. 7 times 5. Okay, Brooklyn subtracting 75. I got 4x equals negative 40. So x is negative 10. Look up there real quick and make sure it'll work. It will because you don't have anything that says x or x or X plus 10. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 
We had it where it was like 75 plus 4 x equals 35. But we tried to get zero on one side. So we subtracted 35 and put that over there and then we got 40. And then we subtracted 40 and put it back on the other side. <laughs> I mean, we got zero on it. It just took us a minute. So that was probably one of the mistakes we shouldn't do. We can't ask to make ourselves <laughs> Okay, that one looks a little bit harder, but it's really not. We got 6 over x minus 3 equals 8x squared over x squared minus 9 minus 4x over x plus 3. The same sign. Nope, because the x's are just the same sign. Very good. This x squared minus 9 is x minus 3 times x plus 3, right? So what's my common denominator? x minus 3, x plus 3. Remember that? That's the difference of squares, that x squared minus 9. Okay, so when we take both of these to the 6, the x minus 3 cancels out, so you got 6 times x plus 3 equals what cancels out here on the 8x squared? Yeah, all of it. If I foil these, that's x squared minus 9. So it all cancels out. You just got 8x squared minus 4x here. Just the x plus 3 cancels out, so you got x minus 3. Okay, we got some distributives to do on both sides, so that's a 6x plus an 18. Over here, it'll be 8x squared minus 4x squared plus 12x. Combine those. 6x plus 18 equals 4x squared. Alright, let me sort out. Everybody know where we are? Yes. What do we, now this one, Caitlin and Macy, you do have to set equal to zero. What's different in this one and the last one? The squared. The squared. Good. So when it's a squared is when you for sure do have to set the equal to zero. So I'm going to keep the 4. I like my A to be positive. Try back there in the on the back behind the printer. Behind the print. That's where the prints come out. I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides because I like my A positive. You can move it over that way though if you want to. 18 doesn't have a buddy, so I'm just going to have minus 18 stuck on the end. So we got 4x squared plus 6x, 12 minus 6, minus 18. Quadratic formula factoring. Yeah, maybe. I don't know about either one. I don't know if it'll factor for sure. Well, she's running. She's crazy. in one more. Um, you do A times C, 4 times 18. But what I'm noticing is that all those numbers are even. So I can take 2 out of all of them and make them smaller. That's just something that I do. If I can reduce the trinomial, I do because I like smaller numbers. It doesn't make it any better. Like I think Kylie's already halfway done with the quadratic formula over there and that's fine. No. Oh. I was, but then you said to do that. So, oh. so I'm going to divide it all by 2. So that makes 2x squared plus 3x minus 9. Divide it all by 2. Uh-huh. Just divide it all by 2, just like reducing a fraction. So now, I think that can factor, because if I do a times c, 2 times negative 9 is negative 18. The factors of negative 18 that add to 3 are 6 and negative 3. Okay, but the dilemma here, we hadn't factored like this in a long time. My A is 2. That means i got to do it by grouping. 
which that's, I'm, I'm going to. It's not bad. Y'all need to stay up to date on all that. So I got 2x squared. I'm going to take the 3x out, substitute the 6 and the negative 3 in. We did this a while ago. So I have 2x squared plus 6x minus 3x. See what we did? We just took the 6 minus 3 is the same as 3, right? I put my factors in there. Minus 9 is equal to 0. Now, quadratic formula would be okay. So if, if you're completely, what the heck is she doing? You could have done the quadratic formula. Group. Is this coming back to you at all yet? GCF of that first group is a 2x. That leaves me with x plus 3. GCF of the second group would be negative 3. That leaves me with x plus 3. Okay, so what we have twice, what we took out. Okay, so there we've got it factored. Courtney? Do you always have to drop the other x plus 3 what you have twice? No, no, those can go in either order. Okay. No. Alright, so now we've got it factored. We just have to set those factors equal to 0 and solve. So x plus 3 equals 0 gets us negative 3. And 2x minus 3 equals 0 gets us 2x equals 3, which means x is 3 halves. Oh my gosh. Now, we're not done. Remember, we got to check and see if any of those would make our denominator a zero. What happens if I put a negative three in right here where my mouse is? That's a zero, isn't it? So negative three cannot be a solution. What was my other one? Two thirds or three halves? Three halves. Will three halves make any of those a zero? No. So negative three is out the door. Three halves is your only answer. So you do all that work and then it doesn't work. Is that work? <laughs> and remember, we did before Christmas that had a name. The one that we did all the work and got an answer and it didn't work, that was called an extraneous solution. equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this question, if you were about quadratic yeah. formula, it doesn't matter what And it took me 20 seconds to sing the song to get it all written out so I didn't get to solve it. I felt terrible. I started singing it fast. x equals negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Yeah, but it seems like there's more time to <laughs> So I'm like, what? You know, like whenever you rewind something. Oh, yeah. So it's negative B plus or minus square root B square root over AC. Uh-huh. All right. What we've got tomorrow. Listen, listen. This is important. Tomorrow. I got a study guide. Tomorrow, Monday, we're going to review study guide. Tuesday, we're going to take a test. Kind of shorten up the stuff.